Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday wherever you are. We see all of you just chiming in from all over the globe and really it makes us so happy. Today we are going to be felting these fun and bright sunflowers. Happens to be my favorite flower and I know for many of you love them too and I know that right now they have special meaning for many of us. We are going to be felting the petals and I'll show you how to assemble it so you can create a really wild and woolly sunflower or other flower of whatever colors you like. Today, this is the one we're going to be making and I'll go over the whole process with you. So thank you all for chiming in. I wanna say hi to a few folks. Hi to Tiff in Ohio and Diane in Wisconsin. We have a few folks across the pond. There's Jay in the Netherlands and Marjo too. Also Erica chiming in from Holland, Jackie in North Carolina. Thank you all so much for being here. Everything's happening over in the live chat, so say hi and where you're from. People who participate in the live chat or who comment on the replay down below afterwards get entered to win prizes. So I'm gonna give away a few prizes right now from our last show. Our last show, our friend Kimberly Pulley was here. We had such a great time. We looked at her gorgeous portraits and those are gonna be coming up in our school. Um, so the people who won prizes for commenting after that show are Ida Hale and Kathleen Doty. Congratulations y'all and here's what you win. You can either choose from our little B-Girl needle felting kit, which is a really fun project we did last spring, or our wet felting activity pack. Um, we've done some things with this. We're wet felting some today and needle felting some today. And with this kit, there's more projects to come. So if you're into wet felting or you want to just check it out, today's project will be helpful. Try the activity pack, or if you want to needle felt, try the B-Girl. So congratulations, y'all. Um, the fairies are here. We have some special things for you today. A special little announcement bittersweet I think but the first up is the lovely and magical fairy Anne. Yay! Yay! Hey friends thank you so much for being here with us today. Over the past years we have wet felted many many a flower together and we've wet felted so many that we they have their own playlist on our YouTube channel. So we have a, a full playlist with about five six videos and they're all showing a different way to wet felt a flower and we have some of them right here for you so we have some uh, these are the ranunculus flowers one some of the flowers we even show you how to wet felt a stem yeah lots of lots of fun to be had there but the fun thing is the kit for today's project could make any of them. <laughs> the kit for today is going to, can make up to four flowers. And, alrighty. Here's the kit, here's the colorway for today. So the kit we have is called the Wet Felting of Flower Kit. This is, it has gonna have multiple color ways. This one is called Sunny Days. It is gonna come with 19.5 micron merino top in citrus, sunshine, marigold, and sun. We have got Tassa Silk in sunshine, viscose top in sun, <laughs> and um, Neps in uh, burnt orange and cocoa and we've got a little bit of, of cocoa bergschaft in there as well. Next up is Fairy Alyssa. Hello, so this is another colorway for our wet felting flower. I do have the merino top 19.5 raspberry, purple, lavender, and begonia and then I have lilac and tulip neps here in the middle. I have some raspberry and some violet viscose and then some violet bergschaff as well. And this one is called Gerber Daisy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, people are really loving all of these flower colors. They're excited that we're wet felting. Yeah, people are loving these colors. Yeah, I love these. And up next, Fairy Angela. If you want to start uh, wet felting but you don't have the right tools, um, I would suggest our wet felting starter set. It would come with everything that you need to get started wet felting. Um, comes with some bubble, bamboo mat, and some mesh. And you can find it on our website underneath the wet felting section. All right. Thank you. Yay. Yay. Oh. <laughs> Hey, everybody. 
everybody. I have my very special guest here with me today. This is my dog, Melina. Hi, she, <laughs> this is her first debut on the, the screen, so say hi. <laughs> She's got a little tutu on, if you'd like to see that. Oh, see? She's a perfect model. <laughs> She just wanted to come in and say hi today, and I'm going to let her down so I can give you some news real quick. It is a little bit bittersweet, but I did want to come on here and just mention that um, I'm actually going to be moving to Colorado next week. Um, so it is, it's been very, very hard to, to make that choice. and. Um, super generously Marie has actually offered me a position to stay on as well so it's just not not goodbye but it's kind of just see you later Yay! <laughs> so I still be will I still will be working with Living Felt you'll see me kind of pop up and answering emails and things like that and I'll be doing some kind of behind the scenes work too which is I'm super excited for and just super grateful for for all of you I've to talking to you on the phone and spending time with all of you has just been so, so powerful just to me and in, in my personal growth, being able to be part of this huge community of people who are all just so fantastic and fabulous, <laughs> the fairies and Marie and, and all of you who join us every week and, and watch us. So I just wanna say thank you for being such a big part of my life the past few years and in continuing to be such a big part of my life. <laughs> And I didn't want to. Joke, joke. Yeah, I don't want to leave it on a sad note. Joke, joke. <laughs> so I do have a joke before before I leave today, and I had to write it down because I was so nervous about about <laughs> seeing you guys and telling you this news. Uh, so I had to write it on my hand. What did the flower say after he told a joke? What did the flower say after he told a joke? I was just pawing your leg. <laughs> still be here in the wings yeah helping us do lots more great things so every time yeah. you see us know that she's like now just part of our extension yeah right? mm -hmm. yeah for sure <laughs> so much love in the chat for Kayla yeah. they're gonna oh, thank you guys too. so much I really appreciate every one of you and I just feel so blessed that I've been able to and honored that I've been able to be a part of all of this fantasticness. And yeah, nice too. <laughs> Big round of hearts for Kayla! Oh, thank you guys. I'll turn it back over okay. to you, Marie. <laughs> oh, so raise your glass to Kayla today. That's what they're going to do after work. <laughs> raise a glass or two. And now we're going to felt flowers. So I know you're, as so I said, it's a little bittersweet. We always love supporting our team and having them grow and blossom in the way that they want to blossom. And so happy that we can keep her on as part of the crew. And thank you all for all your love and everything. So today we are going to make these sunflowers. This is a wet felt, needle felt combo project. So if you're just beginning to wet felt, if this is brand new for you, this is a great place to start. For them to be this delicate and have for the petals to have this much character and this much interest, you really want to wet felt your own fabric. So what I'm going to do today is demonstrate just what's different or you know exactly how we're going to make this fabric. And for those of you who already wet felt, this is going to be very easy. For those of you who don't, this is going to be very easy. But you might want to reference our wet felting playlist, which we've linked to in the description. Um, reference that and notice we're, just, we're only going to demonstrate part of this process today. Reference that so you see completely how to wet felt and finish your fabric. Because today we're going to jump through all the way um, how to get to the finished end product. So here's what you need and here's the basic wet felting uh, supplies that you need. Angela showed you, Angela showed you some. I have a towel on my workstation. Um, I have our single bubble wrap and I have a piece of plastic. You can use two pieces of plastic. I'm just gonna work with one at this moment and some mesh, our wet felting mesh. Outside of that, Get yourself a kitchen sponge. I prefer our olive oil soap, which is in our wet felting tool section. You can also use a ball brush if you want, or just the sponge and a bucket of water. I'm also gonna be using a closet pole or some kind of dowel. Mine's an inch and a half closet pole. Just get it made at the hardware store. Now, to lay out this project, I do have a size guide um, because we want to make our fabric big enough to cut to the right size 
and I have a 14 and a half inch square template. This is, you can go 15 by 15, 14 and a half by 14 and a half, or larger. But because of the shrinkage, I want you to have enough fabric to cut all of your petals out. So this is 14 and a half by 14 and a half. I make these so that I just have them on hand and then I tuck it underneath my bubble wrap as a layout guide, okay? The fibers we are working with are, the gals already showed you in the kit, this is a Merino Top 19.5 Micron, and this is Sunshine, and then I'm working with Viscose in Sun and Tessa Silk in sunshine I think we also call it so whatever luster fibers you want and as the gals showed you we have some kits colors options and more available we're going to be working with this fiber right here and you only need oh sorry you only need a half ounce per fiber so we're going to start with the petals and then I'll move to the rest of the fiber a half for the disc the flower disc so just for the petals you need a half ounce of fiber i always weigh my fiber so that i know how much i have and this is for this exercise today i'm just going to demonstrate how we do it we won't have time to felt the whole thing okay so this is uh, point two once you have your fiber weighed out take your merino top and pull off a half ounce increment and then divide it in two. So this is half of that. Then I'm going to encourage you to divide it at minimum into three long lengths. Four would be okay as well. And that is because we're going to get a very thin layout and I want you to practice laying out your fiber very thin. We want a very thin drapey fabric and in order to get that, we need to lay out only a half ounce or just a half ounce and a smidge more for this 15 by 15 or 14 and a half inch square layout. We're gonna lay out just two layers of merino top and I'm gonna demonstrate just by laying out half or a quarter of this section. And before I begin, is there any questions I should address, Jordan? Uh, just clarifying that it was merino top and somebody asked if you could do this with Coriadale. Okay, I'm working with 19.5 uh, micron merino top. Coriadale is very stiff and will make, it's a coarser fiber and a longer staple length. It will make a coarser flower. Um, so you're welcome to try it. It won't be quite as delicate or soft, but you're welcome to try it. I would just encourage you to do about the same, just no uh, weight, but you're not gonna get quite as much shrinkage as you will with a merino top. So make yourself a test sample. Okay, so I'm gonna lay it out just to show you um, how I want you to lay this out. The last wet felting project we did, we started with a pre-felt base. Today we're not doing that, it's 100% merino. So you're gonna lay out your entire square and we're going to pull off thin layers like this. This is why I want you to divide the wool very thin. And I'll start by laying, um, I want to lay first east to west. So lay your first row of fiber east to west. And notice that I turned my fiber so that the blunt edge is on the end of my template. And then from there, with each pull, I'm just going to use my fingers on the palm of my hand and you want to grab just this end here so and hold tension here a little bit not too tight but so that you can get a nice thin layout so notice it's not chunky there's no big gaps in the fiber it's just very thin and somewhat see-through lay out your entire layer this way so again i get to the edge i'm going to turn it around and we're going to do horizontal layer and then a vertical layer. The reason um, I want you to narrow this down is so that you can control the fiber. All the while that you're handling your sliver or top, you'll see that it's kind of bulky and pushed together here. I want you to flatten it and make it straight. And if you flatten it and make it straight so that this is beautifully even as you pull it off, you have a better chance of getting a nice even pull every time. Making a little piece of fabric like this is a great practice for controlling your fiber and weighing to such a thin amount is a great practice for controlling your fiber. So you're gonna lay out this entire template this way, east to west. 
And then the second layer is going, and final layer of wool is going to go north and south. And there's a reason for this, which we'll get to. So again, we have our blunt edge is going to the end. And notice that I'm doing on this time a very slight overlap. I'm overlapping like a quarter as opposed to a third. Sometimes people overlap 50% or something. I'm gonna just overlay this very bottom edge. I'm looking for a very thin, thin fabric. So we want to control this by making sure we're not putting too much on. I'm, because this is the end of this template, I'm gonna spin my fibers around here. That will help you get, whenever you get to the end of a template, if you spin around so that, notice this is the blunt end and this end is more fanned out. So when you get to the end of a template, if you put the blunt end on the outside, it'll be more level and uniform on your edges. Okay, now pretend that you have the whole thing covered. Notice I'm always tapping my hands, I'm pressing air out, I'm feeling for thin spots. If you have any spot that you look and you go, oh, that's really thin, take a micro amount, not a big amount, a micro amount, and just tiny bit, wisp it into what feels like a spot. But this can be very thin. So here it is, it's just a tiny little wisp. So just fill in any spots that feel like a little wisp. Don't worry about the, don't worry about the trailing edges. Those will all work themselves out in the wet felting process. So don't worry about getting this all to, once you've laid it down level, you don't have to go scooping everything in. Now we're gonna take our luster fibers. We have our, this is Tessa Silk and Viscose. You can use bamboo, you can use Bombix Silk, you can use whatever you like. We're just looking for shiny stuff here. And you can also use a Merino Silk Blend as the top layer um, if you want. So, um, but I really like adding these on top. So what I'm doing is taking about a 50-50 mix. And for this whole big piece, I used about a 10th of an ounce of them together and I'm just going to hand card them. Now, if you get the kit, there's enough in there to make at least four flowers. They won't all be the same color, but they'll be in the mixes that the gals showed you. Hand card, hand blend is really what I meant to say. It's not really carding. I'm just blending them so that I have some streaks and striations, and I don't need them to be entirely uniform. I just want it to be mixed up a little bit. So this one's a little extra. Okay, so now I have a nice little mix. It's a little streaky, which I like. And across your whole piece, just take little bits and just poof them out and drop them down. We don't necessarily need them to be straight. We don't, but notice that everything is going this direction, up and down. So I want that because that's how I'm gonna cut my petals, but I don't mind if this stuff is just kind of swirly bits around. Cover your whole piece with these, your luster fiber. This will give you a real nice sheen and a real nice texture. And like I said, you can use bamboo top, you can use Tussa silk, you can use Bombix silk, whatever you have, um, you can just add to the top for this layer of sheen. And if you don't have it, well then you can just try it you know, with, with just your merino, but it is really fun to add. And it's okay with me if it's a little streaky. Okay, that, there you go. So once you have your piece all ready, and I know I'm not quite in the middle, but you can see we just did a quarter of it. Remember, you're gonna do the whole thing. And we'll just do a quick demonstration for those who are brand new, and you can pop into our wet felting uh, lessons to see how to felt this. We have our soap, uh, we have our soap and our water and our sponge and the ball brass is used to add water to your project you can also use the sponge for that this is very very thin so take care not to add too much water it would be easy to add too much water to this little thin project what we do need is soap to kind of act as glue and hold everything together so i like to add soap and water to my sponge and then press it into the project here. Press it in, you're pressing air out, water and soap in. Now we've demonstrated basic wet felting of fabric like a bajillion times, 
but uh, so we're going to speed through this just through pe for people who are new. We do a little hand rubbing here, very gentle pressure, depending on your mesh. If your fiber is pilling up through your mesh or you see your design moving around at all, then back off your pressure and go a little bit lighter. A little bit of hand rubbing to make sure that everything is wet. You don't see any dry spots there. Everything is laying down in how you want it. And then I like to, I have my plastic down. I like to peel off my mesh and then roll my project with my pool noodle. So in this case, since I didn't bring a second piece of mesh, I'm just gonna flip the whole thing over, let it stick to my plastic. Go ahead and add a little water on the back of this so that I can rub it. And then you're going to wet felt your piece. So you don't need to rub it very long. It's very thin. Mostly you just want water and soap everywhere in the project. And roll it up in your bamboo. You can take your template out now. We don't need that for this moment. Roll it up in your bamboo and your plastic. Roll this whole package together. And then you're going to rock and roll. And this is how we rock and roll. We rock. Count to 25 times doing a rock and roll. And then give your project a quarter turn and do 25 times in this rock and roll. You're going to do this four times until you've rocked and rolled in this direction or from this edge a hundred times. So a hundred times from this edge, unroll your project all the way and just give the whole thing a quarter turn and repeat your rock and rolls. Roll it up. You're going to do this from all four edges on side A, all four edges on side B, and then you're going to hand rub and roll until your piece is completely felted. What we're looking for in completely felted is like a 30% shrinkage, okay? We're going for a 30% shrinkage. So if you've not wet felted before, please see the link in the description after this show so that you can see what we're going for. Uh, for those who are curious, we also have a free um, Fundamentals of Wet Felting tutorial in our school. Uh, you just have to register for the school, but that's free, and you can take that class free. But our YouTube channel has it also, so you can check out all of that there. I'm going to save this uh, for later and finish felting this piece later. Do you have any questions on that, Jordan, to start? Yeah. Um, do you have to roll the same amount uh, for this thinner felt as you would for a thick felt or a little bit less? Um, the thing is you're going to go for what it feels like when it's finished. So for me, uh, the way I roll, and I roll pretty gentle without a lot of pressure, without a lot of uh, aggression, I did roll 100 times from all four edges, flipped it over, rolled 100 times from all four edges, and then I rolled it just by itself without the pole, just on the bubble wrap, and felted it until I knew I had a good fabric. And the reason is, we're then going to cut that fabric, and you really want it to have integrity when you cut it. So when you cut your fabric, this is what it's going to look like. It should be shrinking from uh, the 14 and a half inch square to about 11 inches square. And you should have a nice piece of fabric. It may have a little bit of give a stretch into it. I didn't, stretch, I didn't shrink it 40%, I shrunk it 30%. And that's what we're going for um, because it's gonna get felted just a tiny bit more once we finish with it, once we, you know, we get to the next phase. So let me show you this on the resist just so you can see the comparable size that you're going for. It's about a 30% shrinkage. So I think this first one I made, this one was probably made on a 15 inch square and then I went down to a 14 and a half inch square just so I could give you um, a, a guideline, like kind of what is it, 14 and a half is probably the smallest I would go to make this size of flower. Nice. Okay, any other questions? Yes, uh, would starting with a pre-felt cut down on rolling time you know, I didn't choose pre-felt for this. Uh, if I did, I would use our PFL pre-felt instead of our pre-FM 
pre-felt. There's just something about cutting a short, our PFM is a short fiber pre-felt and our PFL is like a full length pre-felt. And cutting uh, a cut pre-felt tends to, you don't have as, the fibers aren't traveling as long and creating such long linkages, if you will, in the fabric. And so making a lot of cuts, I feel like you're gonna get a lot of, um, debris, you know, and like a lot, a lot of stuff falling off. So it can cut down on the rolling time to some degree, but it's not going to be much. It's not going to be all that much. Okay. Yeah. Good. I have a question from Marjo. Uh, she wants to know if the shine is going to disappear by wet felting on these the, the shine, The shine does not disappear. What you see, Marjo, and thanks for the question, is when initially your project is wet, it's going to look dull. So once your fabric is finished, go ahead and rinse all the soap out, rinse out the vinegar, and then set it to dry overnight. What you will see is that the sheen all comes back the next day. The fiber, the shiny fibers just need to dry for that shine to come back. So great question. It looks dull when you're felting. It'll be beautiful once it's dry the next day. Put it in the sun and you'll just be delighted as you watch it get brighter and brighter. Okay? Awesome. Okay. So um, we're going to be cutting out petals. If you get the kit, it's going to come with this little insert, um, and I have this little size guide for you. This is, like I said, it's in the kit, but I'll show you the petals now. What we're going to be doing is cutting petals out of the fabric, and so first I'll show you these sizes, and I will turn my fabric. Okay, so let's look here at the fabric and the petal sizes that we'll be cutting. We're going to cut three petal sizes um, large, medium, and small. They're very close in size, so as you cut your petals, you're going to want to keep track of them. This one's a little harder to see. I have it on vellum. Um, this one is probably two and a half inches long, I want to say. They're very close in size as you see them, so looking at, the, looking at my hand, they're about the longest one is about as long as my ring finger, if you will, and the medium one is about as long as my pinky. So that just gives you some idea. What I like to do is cut the fiber in the last direction, have my petals be in the last direction I laid. So this, I can see the grain is kind of going this way. And here, this is gonna be the way I wanna cut my petals. So I start with the ones that I need the most of first and I'm just going to turn my fiber over and use a pencil to trace around my, my petals onto the, thank you, I had a pencil, <laughs> I already lost it. I'm just gonna use a pencil to trace around my petals and you wanna get the most out of this. So here's what I'll suggest. Um, if there's a looser part, you might start it, you know, with it closest to the edge here, uh, closest to the edge, because we're going to needle felt that part down. You're going to want to trace over your petals. I don't know if this pencil's too hard. Um, that's okay, you can have it. I will use a pen on this. You're going to want to trace around your petals and get them very close together. I had a pencil. In my pockets, I'll use... I'll use an iron-on transfer pen so you can see it, uh, but but don't use the iron-on transfer pen because it's going to bleed through. So I'll just show you. Um, use a pencil is what I do, and I painstakingly do it. I just take my time and do it all the way. So I hate that I'm wasting this little bit. Trace around your petals, and what you want to do is trace the petals just like this. Put the fattest parts side by side. If you do that, if you put the fattest parts side by side, rather than twisting and turning them, which is what I did when I was first doing this, then when you get to the second row, you'll be able to do this and take advantage of all that space right in there and trace these out here. So you can get it, I get it not the exact, but I'm gonna get it very, very close. I won't share that line but you're gonna get it very, very close. And then we're gonna cut all of these petals out. So you're going to do, of the large petals, 13 to 15, of the medium petals, 11 to 13, and of the small petals, nine to 11. And that's all outlined in the kit. That's what you're going to do. So 13 to 15, 13 to 15 of the large ones, 11 to 13 of the medium, 
and nine to 11 of the smallest petals. That's my suggestion anyway for making a really full flower, okay? We have a question, does it matter which side of the felt you use? Oh, well, I trace on the back side because what's going to be on the top of the flower will be where the luster fibers were. And that's why I want you to use a pencil instead of a pen because all of those edges are going to be in your flower and you don't want that ink marker to have to deal with the ink mark. So you could use an air dry pen if you have patience. You could use a pen that would iron away, but then you're gonna have to take longer to make your flower if you use one that irons away. So using a pencil, uh, like a light pencil, worked really well for me. Okay, any other questions? Mm, not too many right now. Um, okay, once you have all your petals cut out, make sure that you sort them by size because once they're cut they're really hard to keep track of they all look very close in size so i put all my large in a baggie and my medium in a baggie and my small or a bowler baggie so keep all those together and then size by size here's what we're going to do i will use my soapy water um let me just get a little bowl you can just use regular regular water at this point uh, just use regular water at this point, but I'll use my soapy water since that's what I have on hand. You're going to plunge your little petals into the water and you can do a couple at a time. Now you can use the soapy water if you want, but then you're going to have to rinse them again. So just consider that. You don't need them to be soggy, but you need them to be wet all the way through. And then you're just going to, I have ink. You're just going to roll them either on your bubble wrap or in your hand. And notice that we're going to rub it on here. It's difficult to go this way, but if you have it going this way with your fingers, you'll be able to do that. It'll roll in there if your hands are going the same direction as the petal. Right now, all we're really trying to do is give this petal a little character and to heal these edges a little bit. If your felt is very loose, you're going to feel like these are a little mm, fuzzy, but that's okay. Just gently felt rubbing between your fingers like this, and don't felt so hard that it's all sticking together. Even if it feels like it's sticking together, don't worry about it too much. If you've shrunk it a pretty good 30%, you're going to be happy with it, and um, meaning it's going to hold together even if it looks a little fuzzy. And then what we're going to do is crinkle and give our petals a little bit of character. So take it and kind of fold it and scrunch it together. You can then twist it and you can vary how you twist it. We're gonna twist it and curl it and set them to dry overnight. So twist them and curl them and set them to dry overnight. This takes a little time. Each phase takes a little time. I mean, give yourself an hour-ish to get all set up and do your first wet felting. Give yourself an hour-ish to cut out all of your petals. Um, there's a little song that people have been putting on their reels about why does it cost so much? Because it takes so blank and long <laughs> to make. <laughs> this flower would be a good example, but it's really, I find each little phase very therapeutic. Uh, so again, we're using, use clear water, felt the edges a little bit between your hands and your, or on your bubble wrap, just gentle, gentle rolling. You don't want it stuck to itself. Unfurl it, give it some wrinkles, and then twist it. And I vary the direction. So if I twist one this way, I might twist the next one this way. And you can even give it some really interesting character like that and let them dry overnight until you have a bunch that, that look just like this. If yours are too soggy or too soppy, well then just pat them dry, you know, just, just pat them with your towel a little bit. But remember to keep them all together and keep them in order, okay? Cool, 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 cool. Any questions? Uh, we have some comments. Bonnie Roberts says this would make a wonderful Van Gogh type relief portrait. Oh, neato, that seems like a neat idea, having that, that, that pop off up there. Nice. Very cool. Okay, well, I wanna show you what all my, my petals look like here on my tray. So here they are all lined out. These are my, um, all of my large petals are up here, so you can see I have more of those. These are my mid-level petals, and these are my small-level petals. So this is what you should have when you're all done. And then um, you can just go um, piece by piece as you're um, assembling your flower and unfurl them a little bit if you want. So we're just gonna kind of un undo them a little bit. 
Now, in order to use these, we need to prepare ourselves with our flour disc. Uh, is a good name for it to call it your flour disc. So we need to make that. And that's where the needle felting portion comes in. Quick uh, demonstration on that um, to show you how I make it and what I use what I use to make it. So I'm using core wool. It's about a quarter of an ounce. It takes very little. What I do is just take a long skinny strip like this and I don't even know how much this one weighs but I'll just show you how I get there. I'm just going to take it and in this little narrow strip is keep it kind of narrow. So I'm not even really making a ball. I'm sort of making a disc. I'm okay if it gets flat-ish sides and I'm just gonna wrap it around itself. So it's gonna be like a little cylinder. That's totally fine with me. Tack down the end of the cylinder. I'll use a 38 um, star. Just get it all holding together and then turn it on one end and start compressing one end down. So you can keep yours a little more narrow if you want. What we're going to do, I mean you can keep it, it doesn't have to be so high, but what we're going to do is go into both ends and the sides, work your way all the way around and compact this into a little dome. You want it to be pretty firm. So you can get to this dome any way you want, but I generally just start with a little reel or a little roll like that. Needle felting. I'll coax one end to be rounded and I'll coax needle felt the other end to be flat. So make sure you work your way all the way around uh, the top, the bottom, all at the same time and keep poking it until it's really nice and firm and firms like a nice little mound here. This is what you're going to end up with, something approximately like this. So it's a small little disc, it's uh, flat on the bottom, and it's domed on the top. Here's a bigger version, which I like. It's like a little button, so it might be hard to see on the phone. Here's like a little button, and so it can be a little taller. This is probably an earlier one, and I like the taller one. So once you get your little button made, then cover it with uh, the fiber of your choice. In this case, I used um, Bergchef, and this is what we're including in this particular version of the kit today. We're just going to cover it. Go ahead and cover it all the way with your brown wool and needle felt that on. So usually I'll just do the top first and then needle felt the bottom. And you know what? It needs to be really flat, but it doesn't need to be beautiful because we're going to add some character to it and cover it. So needle felt with the brown wool, cover the bottom all the way until you get this little disc. So that's pretty quick and easy. Any questions on that? Uh, how big a diameter is that? Oh, it's about two inches. Two inches. Go, I'm shooting for about two inches. I, I think that two inches is about the right size for this little project. Okay? So we'll probably come in a little bit closer now so we can show you what we're doing. We're going to start attaching our flower um, petals and I'll just have time to demonstrate like a portion of this. We're going to start with our smallest petals first and we're going to assemble them around our disc. Okay. So we start here first, start with your smallest petals, and this is why I say you can, I'm gonna maybe pin him down, but we're gonna start assembling them right around this disc here. And what I like to do is bend this part under, so it, you can lay it face down if you want. Helpful to use maybe your more aggressive needles here so that you really go to get a good attachment. Just too much in the shot. Um, so that you get a really good attachment and the shiny bits, so your shiny bits need to be face down onto the flower disc. And just, you can start to needle felt it in. Now what I do is I sort of get that in place. I'm gonna use my brown wool here and I'm just gonna add a pinch as I go along. You don't need much because we're gonna do lots of layering here, but that brown wool is just going to act like a little bit of staple over each petal. Don't go too thick or it will be very, very bulky. So start with your inner, your inner petals. And what I do is um, you can, if you want, bounce around your flower like this so that they are alternate and then fill in. Or if you know you have enough, you can just start gently 
overlapping them. I find this a little more therapeutic um, to go this way. Gently overlapping each petal, or you can leave a little space between each petal. Just do whatever really feels good to you. But let's make one little layer here. So we have all of our little petals hugged right up, and you can see we have plenty of room down here to mount our other sizes of leaves, of petals. I wanna call them leaves. Okay, so we have our first ones, and already, isn't it like looking like a flower? <laughs> I mean, already you can give it some character and some interest, and if with a gentle overlap, it's gonna look really, really nice. So you might want to go one under, this one, if this one is under and these two go over a little bit, well, you might want the next one to be inside. So if you think inside, outside, you can try and uh, do that so that they alternate. Just play with it so that you're happy with it. And again, just a tiny pinch of whatever is a uh, wool that matches your disc color. Do we have any questions on this face? Uh, Fern is asking if it just takes the one sheet to make all the petals. Yes. This sheet, so this sheet that I had you made, I had you made, I had you make, um, for me, makes all of the petals and then I still had this much left. I still had this much left after cutting out all of my petals. So it, you're going to have, if you follow the same, you're going to have plenty of, plenty of petals left. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our first layer, and then in our second layer, or our larger petals, we want to then alternate where they go. So here, go in between each two petals, right there. Again, with your brown wool, always, always putting that on. Now, you can do a couple at a time, but I tend to just go one at a time, and I'm not, um, I'm going to get myself mixed up here with my petals, I'm not spending as much time to demonstrate right now as I would spend making them on my own. So you're just going to alternate and go in between each two petals of the previous layer. Having created a very thin fabric makes this very easy to needle felt. When you wet felt your petals, you don't have to focus um, overly on the base edge that you're going to attach. So you can, you can just kind of ignore those and focus the wet felting on this part because this part being a little less felted is good for you and makes it easier to attach um, down here onto the disc. We'll get in one more layer and then you'll get the idea. What do we think? Which needle were you using? Right, right now I'm using a 38 star. It's aggressive enough uh, to, get, to get all of these petals attached. And I think you can see how it's starting to come together. You can notice, you know, where your gaps are as you, you know, spread your flower out. You can always go back and add a petal anywhere you want, but let's get a third layer in there just so you can see it a little more fleshed out. What are we thinking? People liking it? Oh yeah, people mm -hmm. want to make bouquets of sunflowers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so let's bring in our largest petals now. And like I said, once it gets down to this, it's hard to tell once they're all uh, once they're all felted. It's really hard to tell. But again, we're just going in between each two petals, and you can always fill in anywhere you feel like you need a few more. Um, to kind of flesh it out. And I like this process because the, the petals look a little more real. I used to love drying sunflowers um, on the stem and I would just, I would literally just put them on my wall just like that. If you dry them right, then the heads will be sticking up. Um, so I think these would make a really pretty brooch, a really great adornment for a hat, a great magnet, a beautiful gift for a friend. I know a lot of people um, right now are associating sunflowers with the Ukraine, and so if you're doing any, any fundraisers for the Ukraine or any awareness, this would be a great project for it, but also sunflowers, a lot of people like sunflowers, and for me, it's always been a favorite. 
here we go. Okay, so I know I could add one more in there, but you can see just three layers really start to flesh this out, really make it look very full and complete. And if you keep just working your way around, you can have this really fun, wild and woolly sunflower <laughs> at the end of a day. I would give myself um, two days to make this project. Now let's get ourselves the neps on this and I'll just show you how to do it. I know neps are the bane of a lot of people. They don't know how to attach them. It's going to be, might be a little challenging so we're getting in super close um, for you to see because the neps are um, a little bit, uh, they, they're like the same color as the sunflower. There we go, nice and close. Okay, so I'm gonna sprinkle the, the neps on and we really want them just like in a single layer. So you don't want them three, four high, if you will. And um, you want a single layer. Not all of them are gonna stick, but here's what we'll do. We're gonna take a thin layer of our fiber here and we're gonna use it like a little blankie or a staple. And what we're gonna do is I just noticed I just put a thin layer on top and I'm going to put it on and now it feels like my naps have almost in, disappeared but what you can do is then take your needle and poke them all around usually I would use uh, like my finer needle and what you're going to end up doing is poking the fiber down and it's going to act like a staple on those naps and then it will start to disappear and you'll be able to see the neps as they're kind of trapped. Now some of them are gonna come off and you're just gonna have to live with like not 100% of them will stick. And you can also use a fine needle, just get in there and take your time and go through all of them. Meaning go through the web, the web of fiber that you laid on top. So anywhere you want additional nebs. Now you could also sew beads onto here. Something beautiful and shiny would be gorgeous. Some sequins would be gorgeous. I just kind of like the wild and wooliness of the nebs. Now, and any of them that don't stick, just add a little more. This, like, this is a really long, big thing. He may not be ideal. Take him out and add in more little ones and trap them down with a fiber. I would then take the, the back of this, once you're all done, I would take the back and apply a magnet. We did that recently with something. I would basically put a magnet underneath a piece of felt, um, sew the felt onto the back by hand or glue it on. Hot glue would work well along the perimeter and then turn it into a magnet. We made something a magnet recently. Do you remember what it was? Something. Mm. Oh, our mushrooms. Perfect. We just glued it right on there. We didn't even cover it at all. So this is how you make your sunflower. And notice now the neps are all showing. And I'll, I'll shake it upside down so you can see none of my neps have come off. Some are kind of floating in the wind, but only the ones on the end. So keep trapping them down and keep working on them so that you have them nice and compact. And I only put them on after um, so that... You don't, you're not competing with them as you're putting on all of your petals. So that's it. <laughs> Quick and easy. So easy. Just three simple steps. Wet felt, cut, and needle felt. <laughs> and you can make yourself a fantastic sunflower or other flower. Now this is a, this is a one color flower that we're showing you. And um, the kits we're providing come with a variety of colors. So what we'd like to do is come back next week and show you how you might build your fabric using more than one color to create a multicolored flower in the same style. So if that's of interest, give us a heart. Let us know that you'd like to see it. We'll do that fiber layout all together um, and build some really colorful, dynamic flowers. What do we think? They love it. Um, a couple questions. Um, sure. We, a lot of people are asking for the measurement on how tall the center part is. The center oh, is. it's about an inch. So it goes from about, it could be a quarter to a half inch deep to the, to the highest part of the dome would be about an inch. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried wet felting the neps on? <laughs> I've wet felted with neps a ton. 
but I don't want to get this thing wet again now that I've needle felted and get it soppy and soapy. So I've wet felted with neps a ton. I don't have difficulty, but the Burke shaft is more coarse and the neps are very fine. So it'd be a lot more challenging to get the neps to bind to this, which is needle felted to the core wool underneath. I wouldn't bother with it. If they're that much of a hassle, we'll then maybe go to beading or, you know, do something else fun in the center if it's, if it's not fun. And what does, else? Does the fabric need to be dry before you cut out the petals? It really helps. I let the fabric just dry overnight. Look, you know, you can dry it in the sun in an hour if it's a warm day. Um, you can iron it so it gets a little more dry, wring all, you know, squeeze all the water out. It's very thin. It's going to dry quickly, but it's a lot nicer to cut and it's going to stretch less if you let it dry all the way before you cut it. Yeah, be a little bit easier to handle. Awesome. What else? That's pretty much it. Everyone says you just make it look so easy. <laughs> it's easy, y'all. This is a fun, beginner-friendly wet felting project, but it's wet felting, needle felting. You're going to get a fantastic flower, way more than you get with using regular felt. You're making your own handmade felt. It's going to get a lot of attention, and if you gift it or sell it, people are going to love it. Just charge enough for it. <laughs> you do. Just do. So come back next time. Let's make some multicolored felts that are planned. We're going to plan that gradation rather than just the wild and woolies that we make sometimes, and you can see some even more fantastic flowers you can make with it. And we just appreciate you so much. Thank you for being with us. Hope you'll leave a comment uh, down below after. Maybe let us know your favorite takeaway. We're going to draw some names for prizes. We've been given the prize basket just me oh uh, come I on jordan on. jordan so jordan's <laughs> behind the camera over there helping me run the show I say hi jordan. hi everybody <laughs> jordan's one of the fairies by the way that was on the fairy crew fulfilling orders mm -hmm. answering emails answer phones graduated from your graduate program <laughs> and i wouldn't let her leave and she's still part of the crew helps me it. with the school yeah it comes in and does willy wednesdays with us so can't leave the family yet. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right let's draw some names okay you got one got one i got one and uh, today they're going to win a flower kit yes. right so yeah. you're going to win one of our kits for today <laughs> and your choice of colors either sunny days or uh gerber daisies and who do you got I have Marianne Spigot. Very nice. And I have Melissa Wagner. Congratulations, y'all. <laughs> Thank you so much for playing with us. We appreciate you. Treat yourself well and make yourself a perfect flower this week. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all. Bye.